when boarding schools were first created, the plan was to exterminate the native people of this country. But today, I think that's, we've taken boarding schools and, and made it a part of, of something that will impact us in a good way now. And so that's, that's something I'm proud of because it's almost as if we've taken a weapon from the, the government that was first used against us and turned it into a good thing. And I think that just shows how powerful we can be as a people. And so I'm very happy about that. Which boarding school did you attend? The boarding school I attended was Chamawa Indian School in Salem, Oregon. I attended Sherman Indian High School in Riverside, California. East Nas Bus Boarding School in Arizona. And then Where's that located? I think it's Waterflow. I attended a boarding school in Rough Rock, Arizona. It was called the Rough Rock Demonstration School. And I was there for about, it was about a year. And why did you decide to go to boarding school? I was sent there. You were sent there? Yeah. By who? A counselor. Do you have any family that went to boarding schools? Like pretty much grandmas and grandmas and my father. Yeah, my uncle Ronnie and my grandma Angie. My mother attended Chamal Indian School. Yeah, my cousin Brandon went to a boarding school in Oregon. My grandma Barbara, my mom Stephanie, my uncle Marcos, my cousin Devin, and my friend Chris his dad, Chris, and my uncle, Larry. My stepbrother, Francis, attended there um, for a semester or two when he was in high school, as well as my cousin, Eugene Bill. He graduated from that school, and he was a uh, large influence of why I attended that school. What were some of your favorite classes at Chamawa? My favorite classes at Chamawa was art and biology. Sewing. Sewing? Mm-hmm. Why? Uh, I, I just love sewing. One of my favorite classes, I would have to say, would be tribal government because a lot of Native students, even on the reservation, I don't think learn enough about their tribal government. And so many grow up without a lot of knowledge of how things are working on their reservation. Were you involved in any extracurricular activities during school? Uh, softball, that was it. Cross country, track, as well as soccer, as well as part of the Letterman's Club, the Pow Wow Club. And my senior year, I was part of the senior class club and um, the recreation club. The extracurricular activities I was involved in was cheerleading and um, powwow, like it's like a, they had like a powwow club. And uh, they chose me to go and do ground blessings at different ceremonies and events. At school, what were the rules on PDA? Public display and infection. I don't think we had any rules. Um, because I remember girls being dressed pretty provocative. Boys and girls, they would be making out or going off somewhere in the corners having sex in bushes. Um, on the football field, uh, there was a high pregnancy rate. I don't remember there ever being like any public affection or maybe in high school I, hear, I heard some. We were in high school, so um, I think they felt it was okay for some students to, I don't know, maybe give each other some small kisses. They should have had a lot more supervision. It should have been more caring and supervised and a lot of pregnancies uh, really didn't need to happen if there was someone walking around um, making sure that children were minding. What chores did you have at boarding school? I, you know, I did everything. Pick up trash outside, um, clean the toilets, sinks, mirrors, uh, mop the floor, sweep the floor. When I was in boarding school, um, we took turns like vacuuming the hallway, sweeping, mopping the kitchen, um, putting things in order in the kitchen. I was in charge of cleaning bathrooms. Sometimes I would sweep and mop the hallways. Sometimes I would help clean the living rooms or small chores like that. Your dorm matron 
signed you up for uh, duties to help out for lunch or breakfast and you had to be the first one there early in the morning at about like 6 a.m. Um, setting up with the breakfast help or cleaning or whatever and serving. You did your own laundry and so you folded your own laundry, but really we were only entitled to a few things, you know, a few couple pair of socks and a um, couple outfits and so yeah, it wasn't like we had a bunch, you know, had a, we didn't have like a lot of things. What is your knowledge on boarding schools? My knowledge, I don't have much knowledge at all on it. I don't really know much about it, except for that people live there and go there year round. My knowledge on boarding schools is um, I've been to boarding schools. I know they started near in the 1800s and in 1887, there was approximately 150 native born schools that Europeans came over and took the native kids from the land and put them into boarding schools. There was a captain called H, Captain H. Pratt, and he was really famous for a, kind of a horrible saying. Uh, they quoted him as, we need to kill the Indian and save the man. And I take real offense to that because they actually did that. They killed the souls of Native Americans. They took the children off of the reservations so that they could terminate the families and steal the land. So they weakened the family unit by taking those kids and making the parents sad and the elders were very sad seeing the kids go off to strangers that they didn't trust. And as soon as they got to the schools, one thing that really upsets me is that they chopped off the children's hair and treated the Indian kids that were human beings, treated them like animals by pouring horrible pesticides over their heads like dogs. And that, that really upsets me. I know historically boarding schools were used for cultural genocide. Um, and up until, you know, more recent days, um, boarding school are now, um, is now just I think it's just to make it more convenient for families to um, be able to send their children to school. Angie, have any of your children ever attended a boarding school? Yes, uh, uh, Rosa attended boarding school and Hardo attended boarding school. I thought about letting my uh, oldest go to boarding school. I thought at the moment it was a great idea until I thought back about how it needs a lot of improvement, and then I changed my mind and she didn't go. Rosa's 20 now, and she attended from 10th grade to 12th, she graduated, and Hardo attended one year, and he's a uh, freshman year. And Stephanie, what tribe are you affiliated with? The tribe I'm affiliated with is the Klamath tribe. I'm part Crow and Navajo. Navajo. So what? Navajo. Kashida from Louisiana. A Warm Springs, Wasco, Yakima. I'm Klamath and Ojibwe. Those are my tribes. Joseph, have older relatives in your family ever tried to get you involved with your native culture? Uh, my grandpa tried to when uh, he was still alive, but he passed away four years ago. And he, uh, he was my only native grandpa. And my other side of the family, they're white, so I have no idea. I think it's important to keep the tradition alive in our families, know who we are, and be comfortable and proud. If people don't know about their culture, how are they going to teach their kids or grandchildren when they come? And if they don't know about it, they ain't going to know their background where they came from. It makes you feel good to know about it and that you have something that's strong. Those early boarding schools, we as a people lost a lot of our culture because the way we learn our culture is through our elders and and that's, that's how we learn our traditions and, and all of our ceremonies. And with those schools, what they did was exterminated a lot of that knowledge. And so we had to start from the ground up um, with the elders that we had left who still had some of that knowledge. Yeah, I'm involved in my Native American culture. I dance and I go to a lot of powwows and stuff. And I talk to my grandma a lot and she teaches me a lot of things about our history and how it is now and how it's changed from the past.